OK, great. Let's start. First of all, uh, welcome everyone. Thanks a lot for joining this session. Our session today is about Azure Machine Learning. Uh, mainly we are going to give introduction about the machine learning itself. So uh, anyone doesn't have any information about the field will uh, be aware of uh, the main uh, you know, definition in the uh, machine learning field, uh, what different topics we are uh, trying to uh, uh, define here, what kind of problems we try to solve here as well. So this is the kind of things we are going to start with and we will start with the presentation first. So our plan for today, uh, we have a presentation. Uh, after this presentation, actually, uh, suppose this presentation will not take uh, much time. Uh, then we will dedicate most of the session time to demos and exploring the uh, Azure Machine Learning service and the Azure Machine Learning workspace. So you will uh, come across many examples which uh, demonstrate uh, the machine learning problems and how to solve them uh, practically uh, using Azure Machine Learning service. This is the plan for today. Uh, and as we said, uh, anyone has any questions, uh, he can post them during the session. And by the end of the session, uh, we are going to go through the uh, questions and start answering them. Uh, so let's start with the presentation itself. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the plan for this uh, ses uh, session, it's uh, the first session in a series of other sessions uh, about the machine learning and the AI. Uh, the roadmap for these sessions, we have, uh, you know, uh, there are like four sessions um, we are planning to deliver. This is uh, the first session of them. The roadmap is uh, this session about the first steps in the machine learning, uh, sp specifically in Azure. Uh, then we have the second session, which is next steps, supposed to be uh, next Wednesday. Uh, and we have the third session uh, about the machine learning SDK for Python. So we we'll get uh, more deeper about implementing machine learning models and try to uh, go uh, uh, programmatically against uh, the machine learning models and implement uh, those models using Python and uh, uh, explore as well Jupyter not Notebook. Um, and the fourth session will be about Azure Cognitive Services. It will be uh, an introductory session about the cognitive services in Azure and how to use them in practical situations, especially for the people who are coming from development background and want to utilize this kind of services uh, without too much hassle about uh, starting things from scratch or building models from scratch, especially for the common scenarios uh, and the common uh, use cases. Okay, uh, this is the roadmap for the sessions in general. And let's start, as we said uh, in our agenda today, about introduction uh, to machine learning. Uh, the machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence. So if you want to imagine uh, how they are related to each other, you can look into the picture in this slide, which summarizes a lot, uh, because actually the machine learning is a branch of uh, the artificial intelligence. So it, it's under the umbrella of the artificial intelligence. And we have also the deep learning is a very famous branch under the machine learning. So uh, we can say that uh, deep, deep learning is uh, a subtopic under the machine learning umbrella, and uh, we will actually try to explore uh, machine learning problems, traditional machine learning problems, as well as uh, computer vision problems as well. For sure, we are not going to uh, go deeply during this session, but the promise for today that we are going to avoid uh, any coding. Uh, so anyone who joined us today uh, without uh, um, any development background, uh, I would say, uh, there is no worries about this because the, the promise for specifically for this session is to give you understanding about the machine learning, the, the, the big level idea, and also help you to imagine how the typical workflow of the machine learning will be uh, uh, implemented in general. Okay, so this is uh, the uh, general definition uh, for the machine learning and actually the relation between the different uh, famous keywords we are, we are hearing about, about machine learning, deep learning, and artificial intelligence and how they are related to each other. What kind of problems are machine learning trying to solve? Actually, uh, when we uh, try to solve any problem in a traditional way, we, we know that uh, uh, there are some inputs and we know the definition of the problem and we try to come up with uh, uh, some rules uh, or some steps to solve this problem. This is the traditional way of thinking. 
but uh, this could be uh, possible to solve problems which is very deterministic, uh, which doesn't have uh, a big uh, possible, possible space of outcomes. Uh, when we talk about the machine learning, the machine learning try to solve kind of problems which is by nature non-deterministic. And uh, uh, if we want to give a, a concrete example about machine learning here, uh, suppose uh, you have a, a kind of disease and this disease uh, you want to analyze and you want to, uh, based on the available data, you want to come up with a, a kind of uh, approximation or a kind of mapping. What kind of inputs which lead to this disease? Is there any uh, association between a specific uh, characteristics about the patient uh, himself and the kind of disease, this kind of disease, if he uh, got infected with this disease or he is already diagnosed with, with this disease. This is actually a kind of a, a concrete example about what machine learning is trying to do. If you notice, when we uh, talk about this kind of problem, we emphasize on the data. So uh, it's all about the data and we are going to repeat this statement uh, again and again during the session because uh, when we have this data in, in hand, we try to use this data to build a kind of mapping between the, uh, the features or the inputs that we have and the final outcome that we are trying to uh, find an answer to it. Okay, so this is a general idea of the kind of uh, machine learning uh, problems that we are trying to solve. Uh, it's basically depend on the data and it's going forward to come up with uh, a model, we, we, we call it machine learning model, uh, that will be trained, trained uh, on this data. And finally, this trained model, uh, hopefully, will, will be able to recognize the kind of the hidden insights and the kind of hidden mapping between uh, those inputs and the final outcome. This final outcome actually could be um, a very discrete outcome, like I have an image and I want to give this image to the computer and the computer has to recognize what is in this image. Uh, uh, if I'm interested in a specific object, uh, for example, uh, I would like to identify if there is a car or not in this image. So uh, the, the answer for this question is yes or no. May I'm looking for a specific uh, animal or a specific um, uh, object in, in this image. If this image is uh, exists in the uh, uh, in the image itself, if this object exists in the image itself, the computer uh, we want the computer to able to recognize this object and identify it. So the final outcome is to say yes or no. For example, sometimes we have multiple objects uh, and we want to uh, identify uh, which one of those objects, uh, uh, the one that we have in the image, and so on. Uh, so if we want to classify the different types of machine learning, we can classify them into uh, three types, three main types. We have a supervised learning. Uh, the supervised learning, we call it supervised because uh, we are trying to give uh, inputs, specific inputs uh, from our data and corresponding outputs. And we are expecting when we train this machine learning model on, uh, uh, on this data, the uh, machine learning model will be able to figure out what is the relation between the input and the output uh, because we give the inputs and we give the outputs from the existing data. So uh, we are com completely supervising the operation uh, end to end to learn as a machine learning model, right? So this, that's why we are calling this supervised learning because we have a very specific outcomes defined to our uh, model that we are training. Uh, under the supervised learning, we have uh, classification and we have the regression. When our uh, outcome or the uh, target label is uh, a very discrete value like yes or no, or uh, A, B, C, uh, class A or class B or class C, maybe it's a uh, uh, dog, cat, frog. Uh, this is a kind of classification problem because we bought some inputs uh, uh, and finally we are expecting that we are going to classify this input to a specific class of those. So suppose you have three classes or three types, you are expecting that the final outcome that the model will be able to predict uh, uh, one of them with a specific probability. So the model also will be confident that maybe with 90% uh, probability that this is a dog or this is a cat or this is a frog and so on. Okay, this is a classification problem. Uh, it has a discrete values in the outcomes. 
in the regression program, uh, we have a, a continuous variable. Continuous variable simply means uh, uh, like a price. We are talking about house prices or car prices, the most famous example uh, for the regression. And finally, we put we give you the feature of this house or the features of, of this car, and we are expecting that you will ex you, you can predict what is the price based on these given inputs. So this is a kind of regression problem. Uh, moving forward, the main second type in the machine learning is the unsupervised learning. Uh, uh, we call it unsupervised because actually we don't have any specific outcomes. We don't have. We, we are not labeling our data. There are no labels for this data. We have a kind of inputs and those inputs. Uh, we believe that there are some hidden insights within, within this data and we are trying to find out uh, the underlying insights by some techniques. Uh, uh, some of these techniques like uh, K-means clustering or Gaussian mixture models. Uh, uh, I will give concrete example about the unsupervised learning. Suppose you are exploring the news and you uh, find uh, some, uh, if you uh, just navigate to uh, Google News, for example, you will find that uh, they have uh, a group of stories and each group actually is clustered uh, based on the similarity of the news. So you have similar items or similar news. Every uh, news item or every story it's grouped with other stories which is very closely or very re related to this story. Suppose uh, a story about elections in USA. So you have other uh, stories as well, which is related to the same topic somehow, um, maybe from different sources or so. But uh, the idea here, we are trying to identify the similarity characteristics of the different items and start grouping them accordingly. This is the, the big level idea, okay? Uh, the third type is reinforcement learning. The reinforcement re learning is another branch of the machine learning where we uh, try to, uh, uh, you know, have we have a new agent uh, and this agent in the first place would be landed to uh, a new world or a new environment and start to learn how to interact in this world, how to get the maximum reward in this world how to get a feedback of the environment I'm exploring or I'm supposed to work in. And finally, I'm, uh, by time, I will start, this agent will start to enhance uh, its behavior by time. I will give concrete example on this. For example, the most famous uh, use case here is the self-driving cars. When we try to train the, the uh, self-driving cars, the, the main idea here that the car will explore the, the typical environment, uh, which the streets, the street lights, uh, the traffic signals, the different uh, objects that this car might come across. And finally, uh, uh, we want to uh, we want this car to be uh, uh, trained or to be actually learning uh, the kind of uh, things which is uh, making this car avoiding the accidents avoiding the wrong uh, practices in the streets like human. Uh, one famous example also for the reinforcement learning, uh, simply speaking, uh, the AlphaGo. AlphaGo is, um, uh, there are famous, famous game called Go. Uh, and this, this game actually uh, is a Chinese game. And uh, one of the companies uh, called DeepMind was able to uh, develop a system which can play with uh, humans uh, this kind of game and eventually this uh, model or this uh, uh, system was able uh, to beat uh, the most famous player in the world in this in this uh, game. Uh, this is the kind of use cases for the reinforcement learning uh, and there are too much details about this but I'm trying to summarize and with each type giving you uh, a specific use case uh, from uh, what we have in our life. Uh, moving forward, we, we have also here uh, some you know, uh, examples of the supervised and unsupervised machine learning. Uh, I will not spend too much time here. Uh, uh, if you can see here for the supervised learning, uh, we have different data points and these different data points, we need to come with a specific line. And this line is, uh, we call it decision boundary. And this decision boundary will segregate or split our data points to classify them. So you can imagine that this uh, uh, red data points 
is if this person a person is uh, diabetic or not okay uh, and the blue uh, the, the blue is uh, the opposite so uh, we if we can find a, a classifier or a line which can uh, segregate between these two types uh, or uh, those two classes we can actually rely on this model uh, simply to classify the new data points which we never seen before this is a very simple example about a uh, classification problem same idea if we want to fit uh, the house uh, prices to align so if uh, later on if we have this uh, specific uh, symbol model we can uh, see using this model for the new houses what it what it could be the uh, uh, predicted price for this house given specific features about this house uh, and, and the unsupervised learning we can see that uh, in, in this part we have different data points uh, and based on the similarity that we discover uh, uh, from these data points we was able to group them in different groups so uh, we assume that each group of those data, data points has a big similarity from specific aspects which we can measure later when we come to discuss uh, some details about the unsupervised learning definitely not in this in this session but uh, it will be in the upcoming sessions okay so this is a very simple uh, exploring to the machine learning methods this is also a regression problem why why we are trying to fit a line this line is our model uh, in in the simple scenario and finally uh, this fitted model to the given data points which is our training data uh, will be the, the model that we are uh, relying on to uh, uh, make predictions or inference later. This is about clustering, the unsupervised learning, where you can see we started uh, from the left side with some data points. We cannot recognize uh, anything about these data points. And eventually we was able on the right side to, cl uh, to cluster uh, based on uh, some similarity measures. Uh, those data points, instead of having them in a seamless manner, we have them actually in uh, three different groups, uh, green group and blue group and red group. Maybe these different groups, maybe it's it's something we can map to some re examples later. Uh, I already gave some example about uh, Google News and when we group similar news together, this is a kind of clustering uh, under the unsupervised machine learning. Now uh, we have uh, uh, this this actually uh, uh, diagram is explaining us the typical machine learning workflow. Um, we said that machine learning is all about data, uh, basically. So we start from preparing our data from the left side. We train our model on this data, simply, and uh, we start uh, packaging this model and then validate the model. What does it mean validate the model? We might package this model as a Docker container and uh, we might also take this docker container and deploy it as an application and start uh, see with some real uh, problem uh, uh, some real data if the results we get from this model uh, it's uh, satisfactory or not this is a kind of validation we are doing uh, for our model before exposing this final model to uh, the public users so if we are fine and we are happy with uh, the results we get from our trained model after the validation we can ship this uh, trained model to uh, the public users and deploy it uh, in production system or production environment like what we are doing with any other application or any other system and finally after the deployment we need to keep monitoring our our model in production to make sure that the model will continue to uh, uh, make good results or uh, produce good predictions and it uh, it will not deviate over time it it will not actually decay in the performance over time there is no performance degradation in the predictions or the inference that our model will do so this is a kind of monitoring to uh, make sure there is no drift over time okay this is the typical machine learning uh, machine learning workflow and uh, this is a very important because uh, without having the high level picture uh, we might get lost in the details and this is a kind of elaboration on the same idea. You have a data and this data uh, will be splitted into uh, two uh, uh, sub data sets. We have training data, we have testing data. Why we, uh, we have this test data? It's a kind of holdout set 
which we keep uh, as unseen data. So later on, we'll be able to use this, uh, this test data to uh, see uh, if the trend model was able uh, to predict this unseen data uh, in a good way or not, and start you know, with some evaluation metrics, uh, see uh, how, how well this model is doing, okay? So this is a big idea about the same typical machine learning workflow. Now, um, there are big questions we try to answer here, actually. Um, what is the big questions we try to answer? Um, do we have the right enough data to build our models? Because we said many times it's all about data. Uh, is the data in the right shape? Do we need to make any pre-processing on our data before going further with the training phase? Uh, what are the important features that our model uh, try to uh, can rely on to find the best predictions or the best answer to the problem in hand? This is also another big question. What is the best model uh, or the best algorithm we can use to train our model actually? Uh, this is definitely depend on the uh, problem, problem type, the nature of the problem itself. What computer resources may we are uh, training uh, uh, a computer vision model or a deep learning model, and this model need uh, GPU, GPU resources or uh, uh, high uh, resources to be trained on. This is the kind of com compute resources we are talking about, and we'll see this very soon during the demos. Uh, how to evaluate the performance of the model after training our model? How can we benchmark this model and how we can evaluate the outcomes of this model? How to tune the model? and how to improve it uh, to get better performance, how to uh, productionize the model uh, by deploying it to a production environment. So eventually we are doing all of this effort to solve a problem and give this solution, which is the final trained model to our users and the users in any specific field will be able to get benefit of this, okay? Now, I believe all of the big questions that we just mentioned uh, could be answered by using uh, Azure Machine Learning uh, Service. Uh, in Azure Machine Learning Service, we have a, a high-level resource or a top-level resource called Machine Learning Workspace. And this Machine Learning Workspace is actually a collection of uh, uh, different services which uh, serve the purpose of the data science projects and machine learning projects, okay? Uh, uh, when we come to the details of the workspace itself, we can uh, recognize there are uh, in Azure, there are three compo uh, four components uh, in the machine learning workspace. The first component, when we create a machine learning workspace, we have Azure storage account uh, to save any uh, artifacts or any data related to our experiments, because all the time we, we are going to uh, run some experiments. This experiment is all about training a model. May It's an iterative process. We might actually go again and uh, make some changes in our model, run another experiment, uh, and so on. This kind of uh, terminology we have to be aware of because it's very common in the machine learning field as well. That's why we are mentioning this, these terminologies here. So you have the Azure storage account to save your artifacts, to save your data, uh, and you have Azure Container Registry because when we deploy our, uh, our models, trained models, uh, to uh, any production environment, uh, it, it will be actually encapsulated as a Docker image, and this Docker image need a repository or registry. This registry is Azure Container Registry. It's a private registry to save the Docker images, which is produced from uh, publishing the trained models. And we have Azure Key Vault to save all of the sensitive data and secrets uh, related to our model. May we have some keys, we have uh, some ABI keys or any other kind of sensitive data that we want to keep it safe. This, that's why we have the Azure Key Vault. And the uh, fourth component is Azure uh, uh, Application Insights. Okay, This Azure Application Insights is all about uh, seeing the logs uh, and the traces about uh, our model uh, when, it, when it's in production and uh, also see the exceptions, the performance issues, monitoring the different logs of this uh, deployed model and so on, okay? Uh, we have also down here the assets, we have environment, we have experiment, we have pipeline, all of these things, we will see it in action very soon now when we start the demo. Uh, we already explained the definitions of these components, the four components. Now, let's start a demo 
uh, about the Azure machine learning itself and how to build something practical. Okay, so I'm going to switch here uh, to the Azure portal. This is Azure portal. I hope you can see uh, the shared screen here. One second, just to make sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're able to see that. Yeah, Yeah. great. So uh, in Azure portal, let's start from scratch. Now we have a resource group and this resource group is just a container. May we decide to uh, create a, a new machine learning workspace to start from scratch. Uh, when we want to do this, simply create a resource and this resource uh, if we type here machine learning, okay, you have a machine learning resource, okay? Create will take you to this uh, screen, and simply we can create a new resource group, and this resource group may be uh, demos, ML. The name of the workspace, maybe we call it ML space. Uh, 1280 or something, anything distinguished. And we host it in West Europe and so on. If you notice here, by default, when we create this machine learning workspace, we can see storage account, can see key vault resource, we can see all of the components that we just talked about. Uh, except the container registry, it's none because it will not be provisioned uh, at the moment we are creating our workspace. It will be provisioned later when we start publishing our final models. Why? This actually will save you a cost, which is something good in, in terms of cost optimization. And we will see that this container registry will automatically provision once we start publishing a, a new uh, trend model as a, a REST API endpoint. OK, so review and create. That will create the workspace. I will duplicate this tab because actually here uh, that will take time. So I already prepared another resource group which contain uh, a provisioned workspace that we can explore immediately. Meanwhile, we can see also how to start this from scratch as we started now. So the deployment is in progress. Once we have the resource, we will come back and check the same. So in this duplicated screen, we can go here. If you notice, I, ha I have another resource group called trials-rg. If I navigate here, I can see that uh, I have a bunch of resources created. Uh, the, the resource of, in of interest here is this resource. This is the core resource, which is our machine learning workspace. When I navigate here, uh, I can uh, just click uh, launch studio. It will uh, open uh, for me the workspace itself, where we can explore the different artifacts and different components uh, of the workspace. OK, uh, if you notice here, we have a group of uh, things uh, which is organized on the left side. You have authoring uh, part, you have assets part, you have manage. OK, uh, if we want to start from the same idea of the machine learning pipeline, the best place to start from given the promise that we give at the beginning of this session that there is no code. We are going to avoid any coding today. So uh, we will start from the designer. So the designer uh, is the place where you can visually build, build your machine learning pipeline. OK, so if I go to the designer, I can start creating a new pipeline. And this new pipeline. Is uh, has a toolbox. And the, there is a canvas. This is our designer where we can drag and drop the different modules that uh, uh, compose our machine learning pipeline. OK, so suppose that I want to start from uh, you remember uh, the car prices example that I, I gave to you. Let's start with something like that here. Uh, if we go to the sample data sets, OK, if you notice here, this toolbox is organized or uh, grouped by the uh, functionality. So you can see here that this group is all about sample data set. This group is all about uh, data input and outputs. This is a data transformation. If you remember, we said uh, there are data. Uh, usually we are doing a data pre-processing steps uh, on our uh, raw data. 
before starting the training phase. This is the place where you can make a transformation in your data and make a pre-processing on your data to make it ready. So you are not uh, uh, going to collect a raw data without doing a, a cleansing on this data to make it ready for your uh, training. So this is the place where you can find the data transformation. Data transformation actually has a lot of modules under this uh, data transformation group. You, you can add columns between two different data sets. You can add rows uh, by merging rows from one data set to another. You can apply some math operations. You can apply SQL transformations. All of this you can do it from here without uh, you know, uh, writing a single line of code. Uh, clean missing data, uh, creating values. There's a lot of things here which we will focus on some, some of them for this session. So let's start with the example that we said. Uh, while building this pipeline, you will get to know many of the common uh, modules that we have, in, uh, we have here in this uh, toolbox. So in the sample data, we have given some uh, sample data to start from. So I will start from this raw data for the uh, automobile price, the car price. And uh, once I drag this uh, data set in my canvas, I can also start think about, OK, what data I have here? So if I go uh, and click on this uh, circle, I can see visualize. This visualize will show me what data I have. Actually, before doing anything, I need to check at least my data and what kind of uh, features and columns I have and what is the uh, prediction uh, I'm trying to do here. So I have 205 rows. Uh, and each uh, each uh, instance has this kind of features or these columns. And eventually we have the price. The price is our uh, outcome, final outcome, that our model will try to predict later once we are done with the training phase. Okay, uh, so if we try to see some characteristics and some distribution about each column, we can just click here. You can see the histogram uh, for each uh, column or each feature. Uh, and you can see also if there are some missing data in this column or not. So this, this column, for example, about normalized losses in cars, uh, there are missing, uh, missing values in this column, uh, 41, uh, which looks to me a big number. That's why we give a focus on this. Maybe we decide to drop this column co uh, completely. Uh, may also we go and start investigating the other features as well to see if we have missing values how many uh, unique values we have, what kind of data we have, uh, what is the distribution of the data, and so on. So based on that, uh, I will actually, uh, because I have many missing values uh, in, in the normalized losses, uh, I, I will make drop for this uh, uh, column by uh, simply by go and select all the columns except this column. So I will say here, instead of typing, just to guide you how to find this. If you go to the data transformation, you can find something here called select columns from data set. So this is a data set and we will specify which columns we are interested in. So if you go here, you can drag select columns and connect your data set uh, to this module. And here uh, in the settings, you can specify which columns you want to keep, which columns you want to uh, execute and so on. Uh, edit column will give you either by uh, with rules or by name. I can specify here which columns I want to keep, which columns I want to discard. Uh, so I will actually say uh, keep all the columns and exclude a specific column, which is normalized losses. Okay, and save. Then we will go further to the next step, so based on my investigation of this data, uh, I can recognize that there are some other uh, features in the given data which need a cleansing. Uh, we have some, some columns which need to be cleansed. Uh, so we have here one, another, one uh, more module about the uh, cleaning missing data. So if you go here, you can find clean missing data. You can just drag this and drop it here and just connect the output from uh, this module to the uh, input of the clean missing data. And as you can see, you can see this warning on the right side because you have to specify which columns uh, you are interested to clean uh, that need to be cleansed and in which way, which cleaning method 
or training mode you want to implement. So I'm going here and edit the columns, and I will specify that uh, specific columns will be included in the cleansing uh, process, which may be, this is all of the features I have. So I will pick uh, some specific features here, which is uh, stock. This is a characteristics of uh, the car, okay? And uh, for, and may also we can uh, check something like horsepower and save. So only three columns will be cleansed. What kind of cleansing we gonna implement here? Uh, we have different cleaning methods, okay? We can substitute the missing values uh, with uh, with mean of the, of the column itself uh, or median of the specific column itself uh, or the mode uh, or removing the entire row or the entire column. Here, I will decide to just remove the entire row. So what will happen here simply, if there are missing value in any of these columns, the entire row will be deleted. Okay, this is uh, the approach I uh, decided here in, in my pipeline, okay? So this is what will happen in this module. Then uh, we can also make uh, uh, some very common uh, thing in the machine learning called normalization. So if you have new, numeric uh, features, these numeric features, uh, every one of them has a different scale that uh, most probably that thing will hurt your trained model uh, because actually uh, the features which has big numeric values will dominate uh, the trained model and eventually it will have a big impact on the final model. To avoid this kind of thing, data scientists usually uh, do uh, what we call it normalization. What does it mean simply? Uh, uh, simply it will make all the numeric features we are gonna select on the same common or the same standard scale. No different scales after applying this normalization. How to do this? We can go also, this is also part of the transformation. We can go and just pick from here, normalize data, and you get the input, uh, the output from the uh, clean missing data module, uh, which is a cleaned uh, data set, and just you know, uh, connect it here to the input of the normalized data. In the normalized data, you have different tra transformation methods actually. Uh, just to keep it simple, we will just pick min max what does it mean min max simply also is we will look into this specific column and we will identify what is the minimum value and what is the maximum value. Then we'll go through each uh, each value in this column and divide this value by uh, the min uh, sub, uh, the, the, the min subtracted from the max. So if you subtract uh, min from the max, uh, you will get uh, what is the maximum range of, of your data in this specific column, and you get this value of the min max, uh, and go through each value in your column and divide it by this min max, okay? So that will make uh, all the points that you have in this column a value between zero and one. So suppose you have a pixel value from zero to uh, 255. If I apply this min max, all the values between zero, uh, zero and 255, eventually will be scaled uh, to uh, a range between zero and one. This is the, uh, the min max transformation simply, okay? What columns we gonna uh, transform here uh, or we are going to normalize here? I will pick from here, uh, we agree that normalization only applied on the numeric features. What numeric features we have here? We have length, we have width, all of these are numeric for sure. We have height. We have also a uh, uh, curb weight. Uh, we have also uh, the base engine engine size. This is also a numeric feature. We have the stroke and bore uh, uh, horsepower. Just to uh, simply uh, make it very quick, I will pick specific numeric numeric features from here. Just to proceed, high MPG, highway MPG, city MPG, and big RPM. No, I added already the big RPM. That's why I'm giving this error. And finally, save. Okay. 
So these are the columns uh, we are going to apply the normalization on. OK, so what to do next? Once we once we are done with all of these steps to make our data, our raw data ready for the training, uh, we will start. Uh, you remember the training and test data. We are going to split this data into two uh, subsets, training subset and test subset. Why we need the test subset? You remember we said we need the test subset because this is the data set that we rely on, which is unseen part of the data, just to uh, understand how well this model is doing. Because uh, the main challenge of any trained model in the machine learning is how this machine learning model will do uh, against the unseen data, uh, against the uh, new data that uh, the model will see for the first time after we have it ready. OK, that's why we need to split the data. How we can split the data? We have uh, another module here called split data, which is also part of the transformation. You can go here and split the data. Just take the normalized data and split the data. If you check here the split data, you split the rows and you can see uh, you need to specify what fraction of split you need. Uh, I would decide to take 70% of the data for training and 30% of the data for testing. And I have here some common settings, OK, just to make things reproducible. Uh, uh, re uh, I will just specify here a specific random seed. This is simply just for uh, reproducibility of the mod of the action. So if I'm splitting the data uh, with a specific random seed, uh, that will make uh, the, the splitting that I'm doing. If I, I want to repeat the same uh, action again, uh, reproducible, OK? And I'm telling here the module that while doing the split, randomize the data, OK? I can control this either true or false. And usually for this setup, uh, a stratified split will keep it false because uh, most uh, actually the, the problem itself, it's a regression problem and we don't have, uh, usually we are, we are more interested to use a stratified split in the classification setup when we have some classes which has more data in the data set more than others and so on. But here for this regression setup and for this problem specifically, we will keep it false. And with that, we are done with the splitting the data. So we expect from here to get the training data set, the training data set which is 70% of our data. And here we get the 30% uh, of the remaining, which is the test data set, OK? Now we need to start the training of the model. How can we do this? And which algorithm we can choose? You have a group of modules called model training. Under model training, you can find train model. This is the train model module that uh, we will use to train our model. We have uh, we have to specify which target column, which label column we are actually training against. You remember what was the label for this? It was the price. So I will specify simply uh, the price here. OK. This is the price. The price is the target column. OK. Once I'm connecting here, this is the data and in this uh, port or this node, I'm going to specify which train, which machine learning algorithm I'm going to use for this problem. This is a regression problem, so the most the you know the typical algorithm that we can use for such a problem uh, uh, is a linear regression. So I will go here to this group of algorithms, machine learning algorithms under this group, and I will look for regression uh, method or regression machine learning uh, algorithm. I can pick this decision forest regression. I can, uh, uh, you know, take another regression uh, uh, algorithm like boosted uh, decision tree regression uh, or linear regression just for simplicity. OK, we will pick linear regression and we're going to connect this algorithm to the train model. OK, now we are ready with the training. OK, so this training module will uh, will take uh, the input that we are interested in training our data against the linear regression algorithm, and we are uh, uh, take the 70% of the given data as a training data. And after the training is done, we will get the trained model. This is the trained model as an output. We need to see what is the performance of, of this. You remember we kept 30% of the data here. 
for the uh, uh, testing. How we can do this testing? We can go and uh, look for scoring and evaluation. There is uh, a group here in the toolbox called model scoring and evaluation. Can simply go and just dig the score model. And the score model is expecting two things. Uh, the trend model itself and the uh, test data set, okay, or the evaluation data set, we can say. Uh, this is the trained model as an input. And the second output, as we said, is evaluation data set or the test data set. Okay. What will score what this module will do? The score model will uh, take the uh, evaluation data or the test data. Again, this is the trained model and start generating predictions. Okay. Uh, and then we can take this, these predictions and convert it against the actual uh, values uh, for the price. This is how we can actually measure the performance of our model for this uh, uh, problem setup. OK, how we can make the final evaluation? We have something here called evaluate model. Evaluate model can take uh, the output from the score model and here the input. And with that, we are done with our pipeline. This is a complete pipeline to solve this problem. What is the solution that we get here? We was able from the raw data to make uh, pre-processing steps, uh, split the data into training and test, train the model against the uh, linear regression uh, uh, algorithm, and finally score uh, the uh, test, test the data uh, using the trained model, and then evaluate the final results to see uh, how, how well we are doing here and how well the predicted values compare to the actual values, okay? So once we are done, we need actually to specify what compute resource we, we are going to run our pipeline against. Uh, let's save here and just explore here what is the compute resources we have. The compute resources could be created from here. Okay, we have compute instances, uh, we have compute clusters, and we have inference clusters, and we have attached computes. Just to keep focused, uh, the, the kind of compute that we are looking for here when we are talking about training a machine learning pipeline is the compute clusters, okay? I created a compute cluster. It's a group of nodes. I have four uh, nodes. Uh, it's simply, you can imagine it, it's a four virtual machines created. And that elastic pool of nodes uh, or elastic uh, cluster will automatically uh, wake up once you start submitting your training pipeline. And uh, after the training is done, uh, training process is done, this cluster uh, and its nodes uh, automatically will be uh, 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 shut down. Uh, it, it will uh, actually uh, unprovisioned after the training is done, which make things uh, very well optimized in terms of, of cost and the ex ex expenditure that you have here while doing your training and the machine learning uh, experiments, okay? So back to the designer. I have the same, same pipeline I already created for that purpose, okay? Which uh, this one, car price prediction, and I have tra I have trained that already, and I have uh, I I ran this pipeline before. I can show you the final result after the scoring. Visualize. You can see here, okay. The price and the scored label. What is the scored label? The scored label here is uh, the predicted price. You can see side by side what was the actual price and what is the predicted price, okay? It looks to me that we are doing good in terms of the predictions, okay? Given that this unseen data has been uh, scored by the model or predicted by the model uh, very near to the actual values. So we can actually check this also from here in the evaluation module evaluate module, you can check here some measures about this. So you have something called root mean squared error, uh, mean absolute error. These are kind of measures which uh, measure the uh, difference between the predicted values and the actual values, okay? And these kind of metrics, this is, we call it evaluation metrics, and we're gonna explore this in the upcoming session with, with more details, okay? In the classification problems, we have a different uh, uh, evaluation metrics. In the regression, uh, we have uh, this kind of metrics. So we are going to compare these evaluation metrics in the next session to understand what is the differences and 
which uh, the suitable evaluation metrics we can use given the uh, problem that we have or trying to solve, okay? Uh, the final thing before we, we wrap up this, once we have this kind of pipeline, we built the model and we train it, how can we find uh, the final outcome? Uh, I have another problem here I have trained already called uh, diabetes classifier. This diabetes classifier, I deploy it as a web service. And uh, when we have this uh, uh, real-time inference, we can see that we can give input about a specific patient, and uh, eventually we will get the uh, result of the model, either this person is diabetic or not. Given this input about the patient, uh, specific patient, the model can recognize if this a diabetic person or not, okay? Uh, how can we test this? Simply you can go here to the uh, pipeline, uh, to the endpoints. In the endpoints, I have published this as a web service called diabetic classification endpoint. And I can test it from here. This is the patient ID. This is maybe uh, there are some uh, just dummy data about uh, uh, fictitious uh, person, okay, uh, with specific values about his glucose, plasma, the elastic blood pressure, uh, some other characteristics about this body mass index, and so on. So, uh, what is the output here? Uh, if we test, we will see that the, the output or the results that we get from this. Uh, deployed model as a, as a web service is this patient is uh, diabetic with a percentage of 87.5%, uh, okay? Uh, I have also something here for the same model in the notebook, okay, to test this model called diabetes predictions. If we open this, this is, we call it Jupyter Notebook. We will explore it later in the next session as well. We will go uh, more deeply uh, over time, okay? We can see here, this is uh, just a Python code, okay? And when I run this code with this given sample data about uh, another person, okay? I will get the result, and the result here that this patient is diabetic patient with a percentage of 88% 88, uh, 88 okay? This is uh, a diabetic patient, patient and uh, uh, the, the model is uh, confident that this, this person is diabetic. The confidence level here is 88%, okay? This is the, the general idea. So this is an exploration, initial exploration for the machine learning workspace and how to build uh, machine learning models visually. And I will close by uh, another nice uh, example here for the image classification. I also can show you uh, another example for training a model uh, to recognize, uh, allow the computer to recognize uh, an image if this image has dog or cat and so on. I have another web service uh, which I, I have published for this uh, classifier and you can test simply by see uh, just select an image because it's already trained okay and we can just go here to these test images okay we have this nice dog test this dog is the model will be able to recognize its dog or not yes indeed uh, this is the result. The model was able to, this is a computer, simple computer vision uh, model, which was able to recognize that this is a dog. And you can see here also the probability, the confidence level, that this, this uh, model was able to uh, classify this as a dog with uh, a confidence of uh, 86% or uh, about 87%, okay? Uh, we can just for the final trial, we will pick this, uh, dog. Actually, this image more complicated because it has two dogs. Okay, so let's see if the model will be able to recognize or not. Test. Yeah, the model also was able to recognize this uh, with a conf less confidence uh, because maybe there are some pre-processing we want to do to uh, address these kind of cases if we have multiple objects of the multiple instance of the same objects in the in the image and so on. That's why the confidence is less. And finally, if we get this nice dog, which has a mask, okay, test. Unfortunately, 
because maybe because of the mask, maybe this is a, do a cat, I don't know, but this is a kind of a demonstration that this model is not perfect. However, it might be uh, needed to train this model in more training data to see more different examples or to introduce some more pre-processing steps and so on. So this is a, a kind of quick exploration to the uh, potential that we can achieve here using the Azure Machine Learning uh, service. And in the next session, we're going to explore more features and more cases where we can understand how to uh, solve these kind of problems, which is uh, almost impossible to solve it in the traditional way. Uh, uh, and that actually will extend us to more uh, demonstration or more demos uh, about similar examples in the next session. Thank you so much for your time and let's move on to uh, the questions. Yeah, There's no yeah. question. Yes, okay. Uh, let me check. Uh, if it's similar, okay, let's start from the top. Uh, I can see one question. Is it similar to teaching the machine learning to uh, diagnose some images? Yeah. Uh, see, actually, it depends on the complexity of the problem we are trying to solve. If you are talking about the diagnosis in the medical field, uh, actually, the, the idea here that uh, suppose you have X-ray or you have um, a CT scan and this CT scan, we want to consider it as the input for our model. We want to train a model to uh, classify based on the given CT scan or uh, X-ray if this uh, person is uh, has pneumonia or not, or he has a, a, a brain tumor or not. This is uh, the typical workflow that we have in the machine learning which we de demonstrated today, that you can implement uh, for such problems as well. However, the details in the implementation itself will be different, depend, depends on the nature of the problem. So if you have CT scan or X-ray in the medical diagnosis, you can use that as a computer vision problem, uh, uh, train a deep learning model. Uh, in that case, the most form famous implementation will be using uh, convolutional neural network CNN uh, models, and this CNN models will be trained against your CT scan data or uh, X-ray data, uh, and hopefully after the training we can get uh, a good results which uh, can classify a specific uh, disease or a specific uh, 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 diagnosis for uh, the persons. Okay, so this is this is a kind of typical workflow in all cases, which you can implement across different prob problems with, with some different implementation details. I hope that uh, answer your question. Yeah, so do we have any other questions, uh, Marit? No, some, I think we are good. The session okay. was good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank, thanks for joining me today. And we have another session which we are going to explore more features, as we said, uh, next uh, Wednesday. And uh, I hope you have uh, a great night. Thank you.